what's up, Liron here, and today we're gonna review a painting by one of my favorite watercolor artists. What's up, Liron here, thank you for joining me in another video. And today what I wanna do is uh, review a painting by one of my favorite watercolor artists, Alvaro Kessney. This is the painting I wanna review. Now, this is an idea that's been brewing in my mind for quite a while now. I thought it would be really interesting to sort of review paintings by artists that I personally love. Now, when I say review, I don't mean in the sense of what could have been done better, what's good about them, not like a critique, more of like why I love it, what I love about it, what I maybe see about it um, that's unique, and perhaps even we're gonna talk about how it was done, or maybe we'll try to get into the mind of the artist and figure out why they did something the way they did it. Okay, so this is really a, a test. It's kind of a pilot episode of this kind of, I don't know, um, uh, show or something that we can turn it into. I really don't know and I want to consult with you and you let me know what you think about it, okay? I'm gonna just do a screen capture and, and talk about the painting. Maybe we'll try and analyze it on some levels. We're gonna look at it black and white, we're gonna simplify it and just see what we can find about it. I think just like we nerd out on, on paints and tubes and stuff like that, we can nerd out on artworks, okay? Um, so this is something I wanna try out. Um, it could be very fun, it could be very interesting, or we may just decide not to do that anymore. Okay, so uh, you let me know in a comment what you think, and if you want me to continue this kind of thing, you can even offer up uh, artists or even specific paintings that you're interested in me uh, just reviewing and looking at and analyzing. Okay, so this could be something really, really fun. I don't know, I have no idea. We're just gonna give it a shot. So let's get started. Okay, so uh, this is the painting I wanna review today, and the first moment I saw it, I knew that I, I'm just, it's gonna be one of my favorites. And I think uh, the first thing that stood out for me really is the colors and they were just so striking, especially, and hopefully you can see my cursor well, uh, especially the kind of a yellow, faded yellow here and the blue for the sky just immediately attracted me to this one. And I love a lot of Alvaro Castanet's paintings, but this one in particular really stood out for me. So. What we're gonna do is I prepared some talking points uh, and I'm just gonna talk about some of the, these topics and really, again, it's an experiment. I wanna try out and see uh, what we can get to just by reviewing this painting and, and see if there's a potential for these kinds of videos. So the first thing I want uh, to note here is notice how blurry this uh, right side is, okay? Now, what's fascinating to me, and this is just a, a general thing about Alvaro Castanet's paintings especially, um, you also see this with Joseph's book, which is in Herman Pekel, you see these kinds of things, but with Alvaro Castanet, it's really, really, um, I think, really obvious, is that he does not include anything that's unnecessary in the painting. So the painting only has what's essential. And I think this is such a crazy skill to have. Um, and, and this really shows here. Notice this right part. Notice how blurry it is. You have no idea what's in there, but our mind really can complete the image and just know that uh, we get it. It's a building. It's a part of the building. Uh, this is just a part of this building that goes on along this uh, river or, or, you know, lake or water, not lake, like that's probably like a dock. Um, and it's, it's just fascinating to me how he's able to nail that uh, impression in such an efficient way. You know, th this is the one thing that really captures me uh, with his paintings. And, you know, they say that really the perfect piece of art, whether it be a story or or a movie or, or even a painting, is that it doesn't include... Uh, in excess. Nothing is in excess, okay? So so you have just the right amount of things. So the story, a, a perfect story in theory is a story that has only, that every word in every sentence is important, okay? And, and this is the exact same thing. A movie that every scene, in a movie in which every scene is important um, and there's not, nothing in excess. So this is exactly the same kind of thing, you know, nothing here is in excess. Now, uh, I did do some photo manipulation. So here I desaturated it. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more about how I, uh, you know, uh, here's another example of how I edit the photos in that way. I have a video that explains 
that, um, how to make it more suitable for painting as well. But anyway, what I did here is just turned it black and white, desaturated it, and um, I want you to notice one thing. Notice how the tops of the buildings and the sky are of a very similar level of, of darkness. So it can be a little... Um, misleading and when you look at it in color and this is why it's so valuable to look at things black and white so here I would kind of get the feeling like the sky is a little darker than the, the tops of the buildings and it's not that true as you notice here uh, okay so this is one thing I wanted you to note now um, I want to divert your focus to this area here you can see this in the desaturated image, but also here. Uh, notice how dark that is. So one common mistake that I see a lot of beginners make is that they just don't go dark enough. And I don't know if it's like um, just some kind of a fear to ruin the painting when you go darker, but notice, okay, so even this contrast here between the lightest part of the building and, and the shadows here uh, is such a strong contrast. And here it's even pushed further. So this is one thing that, um, it really fascinates me that just the ability to push it more and go really dark there and, and you don't even know what's going on there. It looks like there are some kinds of uh, arches here or, or I don't know, some some um, some architectural element that we don't even, it doesn't even matter, but the darkness really brings it out. Now, this brings me to my um, next point that uh, the entire top sides of the, of the boats was negative painted. Notice this here. You see how the very dark area just turns into the lighter, uh, the people, the boats, all of this was negative painted. He just painted probably, you know, I'm assuming, but it looks like it just went really dark here um, and, and just painted around them. And by painting around them, he brought out their shape. Also the people here. Now, this is something that I want to stop for a moment and, and just talk to you about because it's very important. So when you have such a, a dark wash that negative paints, it can actually be used as a stopping point, meaning uh, you can actually stop the wash here because it's so much darker than what's happening at the bottom. So it's like you stop in these kinds of small cracks. You just you can just stop and then move on with the rest of the of the uh, of the wash with the water and everything. But up until this point, it's just like a stopping point. It allows you to take a break from the wash and rest a bit. Okay. So this brings me to my, <laughs> my next point. I want to talk a bit about the process here and the way I think I figure he did it. So what I think was, uh, the way this was done was there was a very, uh, an initial wash that was very blurry. Okay. And very, everything is merged together. So you can see this with the blue and then the yellows of the buildings and then the red of the roof. Notice how it bleeds together and then probably continued all the way to the bottom and perhaps um, covered everything here all the way to the bottom. I'm not sure, but I think the first wash just covered it with the yellow here that is beautiful, by the way, and the blues under it. Okay. So this was the first wash. Now, then I think there was the mid-tones and super darks wash done in one go. So this is where you can see all of these uh, darker areas here, the darker areas on the on the dome here, uh, these uh, areas here. Now, I want you to notice something. Um, okay, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But notice how uh, this roof here was also probably done with this wash. So uh, it looks like there was uh, a red wash added on top of the initial blurry wash and notice how here in the in the edge he avoided connecting it to the darker part here just to prevent them from blending it together but here you can see them uh, blending together okay so I think this was done in the same wash as this part and then everything was connected here now I, I want to show you something um, very interesting that Alvaro Castanet does generally speaking he likes to connect shadows as much as possible and it leads in my opinion too to a more harmonious uh, look and if you just have a lot of fragmented shadows sometimes it doesn't look as good now it may be hard for you to see so one trick first off if you turn it into black and white uh, you can see more easily but another trick is if you invert the colors so let me show you here I just inverted them uh, and everything you see that is light is actually the shadow okay so notice this part here and notice it here so what's light is dark and what's dark is light in this example so you see all of this uh, lighter area? This is all the shadows and notice how it's all connected all the way from the tops of the domes 
here, all the way to the bottom, connected to the shadow here, connected to the shadow here, connected all the way to the boats. So that's just one cool trick to see. Here's also the shadow on the side of the building. Um, so I think this is just really, really, really interesting uh, to see how it connects everything so much. Um, uh, what else I want to say? Okay, and then finally, I think there was a third wash that added all of the details of the boats, the dry brushes here. Notice this dry brush stroke of blue, just one stroke, and you got that detail in here probably as well. Just one stroke, one stroke, and this one stroke go <laughs> is really important to um, to get the details right. And and I think this stage also he added some white to the top of the of the people's heads, uh, some probably white opaque paint here on this pole uh, with the reflection and all of the details and the reflections like this. Okay. Now, uh, this is in terms of the work process. Another thing I noticed is that, uh, by the way, I hope I'm not like rambling too much. I don't know, it's the first time I do this kind of video. So hopefully you enjoy it. Um, notice the shadows, okay? This is something that he keeps doing all the time and I love and I learned a lot from. And that is to play around with warms and cools in the shadows. So if we take a look at this now, this is the shadow, but he's not just using one boring color for it. If we zoom in a bit, you can see touches of yellow, touches of blue, touches of red. I hope you can see all of this. Here there's a lot of red actually near the bottom. Uh, here you can see some blues and he likes to just push pure paint. Here there's like a real opaque blue just around here. Hopefully you can see this well. There's a lot of blue here. He loves to always push the warm and cool temperatures in the shadows. Even here in the boat, you can notice, uh, you see this uh, this area uh, that has a lot of blue and red in it. So this is something I noticed and I actually learned to do from him. Now, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is the reflections. Notice how they're crisscrossed and really abstracted. Uh, by the way, there may be a bit of background noise. It's a really um, gloomy, rainy day. Uh, notice here in the black and white version as well. Notice how all of the brush strokes of the shadows of the reflections are connected. And this is super important, once again, to connect the shadows as much as possible. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk about I, that I like. This is a nice touch that I actually really liked. Is how uh, the, the water reflects the, the top. So you have here um, blue, then yellow then again yellow and finally back to blue uh, and I think this provides a really interesting look um, so this is mostly everything I talked about one final note really is the uh, the variety of edges and this is something I keep talking about that you want to have a variety of edges some harsh some very blurry and, and non visible so if you look at the building here on the right it's really blurry if you look at this edge here it's really blurry from blue to the yellow. But if you look at these ones, they're really harsh and sharp. If you look at this one, it's very blurry. But if you look at this one, it's very harsh and sharp. This contrast is really helpful in creating interest. Uh, all of this transition from mid-tones to dark, uh, rich shadows is also done very gradually as opposed to the boats that are contrasting here with the edge uh, between the water surface and the, and the building. So all of this um, contradiction, like the, the way Alvaro Castaneda likes to call it, um, is it's just such a beautiful way of, of conveying uh, your message in a harmonious and beautiful way. Okay, so uh, I've been talking for about 10 minutes now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I wasn't expecting it to be such a long video. Uh, so what we're going to do now is move to the conclusion. And I will mention uh, that I want your feedback. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, uh, really let me know. Oh, by the way, the brush, dry brush strokes here also. Uh, another like um, you know contradiction whatever uh, so anyway yes I really hope you enjoyed this one let me know in the comment below what you think because it's really a pilot episode uh, and this is it let's wrap up this video okay so this is it thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it um, let me know what you think in a comment below as I mentioned this is a test just me trying out the idea and seeing how it works I think we can actually benefit from it because when you're looking at a painting in such a deep level of analysis maybe you, you can discover something that's like whoa this is why I like it so much maybe I can incorporate it in my artwork in my style and really bring it towards my own creation okay because I think we're all about learning from many different different people but then going with our own way of doing things and our 
uh, own authenticity, I guess. Okay, so let me know what you think in the comment below. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to put links to everything down below. If you still haven't subscribed, make sure you do. I have tons of videos of me painting and reviewing paints and um, drawing and sketching and talking about techniques and, and exercises and all sorts of things and just vlogging and, and sharing with you my experiences as I go along in the artistic world and in building a business around art. Okay, I'm going to put a link to the uh, podcast as well in the description box below. So be sure to check it out if you want to listen to me nerd out on some of these concepts more in depth. Uh, I'm going to also put a link to my Patreon page. So if you want to support me, it's like $1 a month or $5 a month and you get some more personal updates and video sneak peeks. I actually shared about this video maybe two weeks ago. Um, so if you want to be in the know before everyone else, be sure to check that out. Uh, also, my Instagram is where I'm most active in terms of showing my artwork and works and process and things like this. And this is it. Thank you so much. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.